so these things rocket stoves they are surprisingly very much more efficient and of course are subject to intense debate about which is the best now surprisingly enough these things are in fact a development of something called the argand lamp the argand lamp was developed in 1780 by sticking a candle under a glass chimney you burn a candle it burns in the same way that wood burns and it gives off the light but an awful lot of soot but if you put a chimney on it then it has time to burn completely and um, it burns with something like seven to eight times longer and more brighter than a normal candle and of course it was used for oil lamps uh, they're burning vegetable oil and it turned it into stoves as well so there's a potential of using the Argand lamp design to make an oil stove, which I'm going to investigate because I think that's uh, extraordinarily interesting. The whole idea was really just stick a chimney on it, and that makes a huge difference because of the way wood burns. Now, wood is made up of um, hemicellulose, cellulose, lignin, and a few metals and bits and pieces that represent a small proportion. There's also quite a lot of water in wood. Hemicellulose and cellulose are in fact carbohydrates who are just like sugar. These are the proportions of those components, but in a nutshell, wood is basically 50% carbon, 6% hydrogen, 44% oxygen, and trace amounts of metal ions. So, what happens when you burn wood? Surprisingly, it's a complex process involving three stages. In the first stage, from up to about 160 degrees centigrade, basically, the wood dries. All that vapour that's coming off is steam. It's the water in the wood that's been driven off. And of course, different wood has different water and different conditions make it wet or dry. And of course, it's very difficult to light wet wood. And you get a lot of steam and white smoke coming off it. And that's just the water coming off. Around about 200 degrees centigrade or so, the hemicellulose begins to break down. And it breaks down into carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, formic acid and acetic acid. And as the temperature begins to raise, it goes into stage three, two, which is where the burning begins. Now that happens above 280 degrees centigrade or so, and a large amount of heat is given out, but so are a large amount of gases like methanol and methane and ethanol and carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Those gases are actually known as secondary gases. Now it's about 60% of the wood that you're decomposing in this way is secondary gases. It's why wood gasification works, because in wood gasification, you're not actually looking to burn the wood, you're looking to decompose the wood. The wood always decomposes, but when there's sufficient oxygen, it will burn. If you take away the oxygen and just give it the heat, it'll decompose into these gases, gases which is exactly what gasifiers do, and that's what you're collecting when you're working with a gasifier, but when you're working with a rocket stove, all those secondary gases would just disappear in an open fire, as they did in the candle on the argand lamp. But basically, sticking a chimney on it means that they can't disappear, and those secondary gases become part of the combustion process. Then it goes into stage three. Now it's around about 320 degrees centigrade, and it's when the lignin begins to break down. And all these gases that are given off are still volatile. I said they're methane and methanol. There's some ethanol in there. There are various tars and volatiles that are produced. And they either mix with the cool air that's above the fire or stay and burn. But most of them will escape. What's left after that process, of course, is charcoal, and something like 20%, 30% of the wood is charcoal. So if you cover it up, that's exactly how you make charcoal, by forcing off all of those volatiles. And of course, charcoal burns. We all know this, plenty of barbecues around, and charcoal burns because it's carbon. So above 400 degrees centigrade or so, the carbon will be burning with the oxygen that's available, and that will give off glowing red embers and a low amount of heat when you're away from it, but a quite a high heat when you're at the centre of it. So wood burning is actually quite a complicated process, reliant on temperature and availability of oxygen. Incidentally, soot is just bits of carbon particles that haven't burned properly. So what would make a good rocket stove? Well, anything that will keep those principles in mind. So let's take this as an example. The fire burns here at the bottom. Because because it's a fire burning and it's directed, it draws air in from here. Now, the air passes in this direction and up that chimney. But we don't need it to be here. This is where we feed the fuel in. 
If we put the fuel in now with the shelf that was clear for air drawer, it would work just as well as this. Because it maintains the same principle. We've got a fire here and we've got a drawer of air. So that air is being drawn in there, which is giving it the oxygen that it needs. And of course the gases then travel along this leg and up that chimney. And what that does is gives it time for that whole thing to burn. So the temperature goes up quite rapidly, reaching sort of 500 and 600 degrees centigrade around this area here. And all we need to do is give it time and oxygen so that it doesn't escape. Now, when it gets to about here, in this section down the bottom, of course, there isn't a lot of oxygen there, which is what this is all about. There's a pipe here at the bottom that draws extra oxygen in from here so that at this point here we're drawing in extra oxygen. Of course we're drawing in extra oxygen because there is a force there where that gas, hot gas is rising and because the hot gas is rising it's drawing air in here. As it rises it will also draw in air in here but that pipe goes past the fire and is directed to here, giving it kind of an afterburn or an extra bit of oxygen so that the gases that are here are now hot and still maintained in this area are going to burn fully, which is why these things actually are more efficient. And in a normal open fire, you're not actually burning that much of the material, quite a lot of the material. Remember, 60% of wood is gases and volatiles just escapes. It goes into the colder air, cools down and doesn't burn. Here you're keeping it in one place where it's still hot, providing it extra oxygen, so of course it burns and we get a more full burn. And that's the point about rocket stoves. They allow that more full burn. Now we call rocket stoves because that heat really does sound like the roar of a rocket. Now as long as your rocket stove can obs observe those principles, it's basically going to be a good rocket stove. The other thing then comes down to choices that you want to make. So, for example, we did this as a picnic-based rocket stove. And it's a pretty good rocket stove, as it happens, and it's portable. Now, if you made the same thing out of brick, clay or cement, it would restrict its portability. So, in terms of its usefulness, it would be very much more restrictive if what I want to use it for is a picnic stove. If I want to carry it around and have a good picnic stove, I certainly don't want to be making it from brick. If I want to do something where I'm making it um, a permanent feature, then it's probably better to make out of brick, clay, concrete, something like that. But then that's a choice you make about what job you want that rocket stove to do. Now there are other variations, obviously, of those same principles that you find in cooking stoves the world over. So you, they make a clay box out of it with a fire box, then inserts the pots to go in, and it performs really well as long as it has those principles. Now those principles aren't new, they were rediscovered, but they're the same principles that the Romans were using for their hypercosts when they were doing central heating in their own stoves. They used exactly these principles. As I said before, they were rediscovered in 1780 in the Argand lamp, and then again in 1980, because most stoves that were being used around that time were just three-corner stone open fires, and they were rediscovered as a principle and introduced, but it's a very old principle indeed. And if you use those principles, pretty much any rock, any stove you make is going to be a pretty efficient stove. And then other choices are about choices you make in terms of materials and what you actually want to do with it. Anyway, I hope that helps understand rocket stoves a little bit better. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.